Hi, today we are going to look into what is dystonia, what are the common forms of dystonia, why dystonia occurs and how do we diagnose dystonia. So dystonia means DYS, this means abnormal, T O N I A, tonia, tonia means tone, it is basically abnormal muscle tone or abnormal muscle contraction. So any person who is having abnormal muscle contraction, we call that as having dystonia. Dystonia primarily occurs due to a part of the brain called as basal ganglia which is not functioning well. It is a basically dysfunction of the part of the brain which contains the fine skill movements and when you lose those fine skill movements, you will have abnormal muscle contractions leading to abnormal posturings. These are called as dystonia syndromes. Dystonia can occur due to various causes. Most of them are genetic or hereditary or idiopathic causes. However, many more causes could be related to medications or drug induced or recurrent brain injuries such as stroke, head injuries following accidents or infections in the brain or immune mediated disorders like allergic type of a response in the brain cells or tumors of the brain or some metabolic changes in the blood happening, some metabolic disorders. So grossly dystonia can occur due to various causes based upon the underlying causes we go into it how to manage it also. Further when you go into the International Movement Disorder Society how it classifies dystonia, they have div divided dystonia into two different entities. One is called as axis one where we try to explain which body part is affected, how it is affected, at what age is affected, how it has progressed to define axis one definition. And then secondary axis two is etiological definition. So you match those two things and tell person whether he is having what type of dystonia going on. So dystonia can occur for any person at any age all the way from birth till the death based upon the underlying cause. It is not just limited to certain age group. Second, based upon which body part it is affected we give different terminologies or different types. We call some set of if the dystonia occurs only when doing certain activities. For example, if you are writing, you are fine with everything else, but only when you are writing you are having problem, we call it as writer's cramp or a task specific dystonia. Then if it is only while you are doing some other specific task like some bankers have difficulty in counting notes. Let us say that was about 15, 20 years back, not nowadays most of the things are machine counted or some of the professional sports persons or tabla players, musicians, cricketers, tennis players, golf players, piano players, they are professional perfectly fine. But when they are professional certain notes, they feel that they are not able to control their muscle movement. So those are all called as task specific dystonias. So you only notice dystonia certain activities. However, further people can have certain part of the body much more constantly not only for related to one certain task. When it is not related to one certain task but it is present most of the time we call it as a focal but limited to only one body part that is called as a focal dystonia. For example, some people come with excessive eye blinks or difficulty to open the eyes when they close, it is called as blepharospasm, which is a type of a focal dystonia. Some people can have only neck abnormality, holding the neck tilted like this. This is called as cervical dystonia. Similarly, they may be having posturing of the hand. Let us say they had a head, a head injury or a stroke. After that, their hand is in a certain posture most of the time. That is called as focal dystonia. So depending upon which body part is affected, we give different different names such as writer's cramp or a task specific dystonia, blepharospasms, cervical dystonia, focal hand dystonia and so on. Further, 
some people may not be having just one body part, there may be two contiguous body parts, means let us say the neck and the hand is required, these two are related to each other, they are in contiguous regions. We call them as segmental dystonia, they have facio-brachial dystonia, when you call facio-brachial, they have the neck and the hand posturing is there, that is called as segmental dystonia, it can be in two any contiguous part of the body. Then we have multifocal dystonia, multifocal means it is not in two contiguous, one hand is there, one leg is in what we call it as multifocal dystonia or some people can be having only one part of the body, for example, person having a stroke or a bullet injury to the brain or so for some reason head injury, so one part of the brain is not one, so one part of the body is only having dystonia, we call it as hemibody dystonia and then we have generalized dystonia, generalized dystonia is something which people having difficulty in walking, their lower limb dystonia is there, gait related dystonia, that is walking related dystonia is there, truncal dystonia is there in addition to other body parts, when these are in, we call it as generalized dystonias. So by knowing these terminologies, we will be able to know which body part is affected or which all body parts is affected, how severe or how bad it is. These helps us to understand what all the, if someone tells that you are having a blepharospasm, there is not much to explain further. It just means that only eyes are affected, nothing else. However, what is the cause for this? The cause for this is what we put it under axis 2. These are all different reasons for what happens. One can be due to, as I told you, genetic. Second is related to vascular events, means stroke-like events in the brain. Metabolic changes because of some metabolic abnormalities or changes in the blood or autoimmune changes, tumors in the brain and multiple other causes. These causes will give us an idea how the changes can happen, what is the response to treatment, whether you can cure or not cure. Dystonia always does not mean that we should be treated. Some people may be having a little bit of dystonia, most of the time it does not require anything. What is the cause for dystonia, how severe is the dystonia, whether it is interfering in one person's life or not, those are the reasons and what is the underlying cause for that will help us to make a decision whether you should be treated, whether you can be cured or let us, let us say that this much symptoms is fine, we can leave it off also. So each understanding of these things will help us to differentiate a mildest form of a dystonia from a severe form of dystonia as treatment varies, response varies. I hope with this you are able to get a bird's view of what you mean by dystonia and what to expect and when you tell a different names, what does that mean? Thank you.